It is 6 o'clock on a Friday morning. Good morning, everybody. Is President Trump in trouble? You know, there's a whistleblower complaint that says the president was trying to get Ukraine's president to interfere in our upcoming election. Now, yesterday, lawmakers grilled the acting director of national intelligence, and he says he thinks the whistleblower did the right thing. This morning, we want you to be a part of the conversation, as we do every day. So the question is, do you think the president is in trouble? This sounds kind of like the Russia thing, just insert a new country. Mm, the president is tweeting, we're monitoring all that. He's angry at CNN this morning, That's which is no surprise. Yeah. CNN was very active yesterday. When was the last <laughs> time he was happy with CNN? <laughs> I think probably in the early 80s when they launched, <laughs> which was 1980. So it's like, hey, I can't get something else to watch. Not so much anymore. Okay, Kerry says, uh, yes, the president is in trouble. Here's an interesting one from Bones. If any of the allegations are correct, as the transcript doesn't look good on any level, then he would be in trouble if the Republicans didn't have control of the Senate. Preach! That's the only thing that will keep him afloat unless there's even more evidence that surfaces that even the Republicans can't support. Other than that, there we're getting it split down the middle. We love to hear your comments on both sides because that's how we represent. And Bones has been watching because we said that earlier this week about how impeachment works. It's a Republican-controlled Senate. He may not get kicked out of office. I just like his name. <laughs> Your Facebook name is Bones. What's Bones. up? Bones. That could be his real first name. Who knows? Could be too. Who are we to judge, right? <laughs> all right, let's get to all of your local and national top stories. We call it Daily Blend. We do it in five minutes. Rob, you got cool news for the weekend. I do. Uh, you know, this is a Friday, right? It's all about the weekend. And we, we've got some unsettled weather moving in for sure. Now, if you're in the valley spots, you're hearing that thinking, oh no, is it going to rain at my house? Is it going to blow my weekend plans? I don't think so. I think at best on Saturday, you might get a stray, brief, very light shower, and that's at best. I think most of us are looking at just some clouds and that's it. In the mountains, it's a different story, so I'm gonna talk about that. First of all, the number one thing that I think you can bet on and count on is that the cool down is happening right now. Temperatures roughly in the 70s and low 80s today, it's just gonna be absolutely great. And you can see yesterday, we topped out upper 80s for some of you as the low 90s, but it was a huge turnaround from the record heat that we saw in some locations just the day prior. A lot of the changes happen because of the wind and it's still breezy right now. What we're gonna see are temperatures go from the 60s roughly into the 70s and low 80s. It's cooler for a lot of us this morning, but warmer up high, mostly due to the wind. Let me tell you something, folks. In the mountains, it's gonna be a mix of rain and snow. And I would say either on Saturday or on Sunday, or maybe even both days, you have to check ahead on the roads because there may be some snow and some momentary chain control. So I'll have more on that and the timing and everything else a little bit later on. Brittany. That is good to know. We'll have to update you throughout the weekend and Monday morning. All right, our traffic team, Jeremy, looking out for you this morning. Take a look at your screen. I have a delicious traffic alert. You're gonna see delays for Farm to Fork on Capitol Mall this weekend and a portion of course of the tower bridge will shut down on Sunday. That means you'll need to take I Street. And of course we'll update you throughout the day. Let's talk about traffic. You can see we're still in the green and green is good guys. That means everybody for the most part is going the speed limit. Let's enjoy it while you can. If you're taking five southbound at Sutterville Road, I have a caution flag out for you just because we have some sort of animal running around in the in the slow lane. So I want to make sure you avoid the slow lane. Traffic is still moving. As we take a look at the other side, Elk Grove 99 into Sacramento, 18 minutes, no reported issues for you. Five northbound, we're looking at 68 miles per hour. So the good news is that traffic is moving in Elk Grove. Tracy Triangle, you're up next, Walt. Do you know what the animal is in the, in the No, room? they haven't told me yet. I'm guessing it's a road runner. Uh, stop you mean, it. You know, there are <laughs> road runners. There are road runners in Yolo County, no ah. lie. Just like in the cartoon. True. Brittany looks at me. She gives me that look all the time. Like, Okay, uh, this morning investigators are trying to figure out what went wrong when a 28-year-old skydiver veered off course, crashing into a semi on Highway 99 yesterday. It was in a campo between Galt and Lodi. She was part of a group of seven jumping with a Lodi Parachute Center. As you may know, this facility is no stranger when it comes to deadly incidents. Seven deaths anywhere is concerning to me, uh, but we don't really have jurisdiction over their policies and procedures. Just last October, an experienced skydiver with more than 2,500 jumps died at the Lodi Parachute Center. Up to 18 people are believed to have been killed there since 2000. The owner didn't want to talk on camera last night. He is expected to hold a press conference this morning in about four hours. And nearly 18 months later, the investigation into the Stephon Clark shooting is now over. Federal investigators closed their case, saying there was not enough evidence to charge the officers involved in the shooting. 
For the first time, we're hearing the officers' voices. ABC 10's Carlos Herrera is in the newsroom with what they had to say about that tragic night. And Carlos, they were caught on camera or were on camera just hours after the shooting. Yeah, Walt, and the two officers shot and killed Clark in March of last year. They were responding to a call of a person breaking car windows, which eventually led to a chase. Both officers were interviewed just hours after the shooting. They both said they were scared and thought Stephon Clark had a, sh a shot at them. During the interview, Officer Terence Mercadal said he thought he remembered yelling gun and got back behind the corner of Clark's grandmother's house for cover. Officer Jared Robinett also mentions he remembers seeing a gun. Here's how they described the moments leading up to the shooting. As soon as I turned the corner, I saw him punched out like that. I remember kneeling down on the left knee and returning fire because um, I believe we were being fired upon. We saw the subject go down and uh, we began to give him, you know, kind of verbal commands for us to, you know, for him to show us his hands. Uh, he wasn't moving anymore, but we could only see his right hand. His left hand appeared to be kind of tucked in under his body. This morning, we're also hearing from Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn. His interview coming up in the next half hour. You won't want to miss that, Walt. All right. Thank you, Carlos. All right, let's get to some other top stories right now in your Daily Blend. Suicide Awareness Month. An Elk Grove coffee shop, Riscate Coffee, now has a safe space for anyone struggling with thoughts of suicide. The owner, Lad Casillas, who lost his brother Scott to suicide, says it's about starting a conversation. We've got to talk about it. We've got to make it as commonplace as talking about cancer now. You can help raise awareness by taking part in our Out of the Darkness Walk in Sacramento tomorrow morning, starting at 10. Taken from the tarmac, the FBI looking for more than a quarter million dollars stolen at JFK Airport, New York. An armed car was carrying eight bags of cash being delivered to Miami. But one of them didn't make the flight. Police arrested a 40-year-old Delta Airlines worker, Quincy Thorpe, who says he didn't do it. He's denying it. They searched his home, they searched his car, they didn't find anything. Ending homelessness. Governor Newsom just signed 13 new laws giving cities and towns more power to fight the homelessness crisis. Some local governments can now bypass environmental codes, declare emergencies, and build new shelters on public land. It comes amid new evidence that homelessness is taking a toll on California water quality. That is your daily blend. If you have something you want to share with us, please use the hashtag MorningBlend10.